Hey everyone, today I'm going to be changing the oil in my 2001 Isuzu Rodeo. It's a simple task. Most people know how to uh, change their oil if they have any sort of automotive skills. It's one of the most basic, basic tasks you can do, but for those of you who uh, would like to learn how to do some things on your own, this is one way you can uh, get started and save a little bit of money. It's a very easy task, but um, figured I'd show the steps. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I am laying under the vehicle on the uh, driver's side up by the front left tire. And if you look up from here, that bolt right there is the oil pan, oil pan drain plug. So that's what we need to remove in order to uh, drain out the oil from the crankcase. Um, now I could go ahead and just pull it out. Uh, the problem with doing that is um, there's a skid plate here and a lot of the oil is going to end up draining onto the skid plate and it just makes a mess. And I'm actually borrowing my parents garage right now to do this so uh, I'd like to try to keep the oil off the floor so they'll let me come back and do some more maintenance here. So anyway, I'm going to work on removing the skid plate. Again, you don't have to do this, it's just the way I like to do it. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to have to remove the front skid plate which is right up under the front bumper. There's the bumper. So there are four 14 millimeter bolts that hold this on. There's one there. Let's see the other one over here. Uh, and then two in the back. One there and one here. So I'm going to remove those first and pull this skid plate out. Now you'll see the ones in the front have sort of a slotted keyway. So once you take, you just have to take the two bolts in the back uh, completely out. This one and that one. Take them out completely and then just loosen the ones in the front enough to slide the skid plate forward and it'll drop down once the nut gets into this cutout here. Um, so I'm going to do that and then we'll work on getting the back skid plate out and we'll drain the oil. I'll be back with you shortly. Alright, I've got the front skid plate removed which you can see will reveal the oil filter right there. It's another reason that it's best to remove the skid plate. You can remove the filter from the top, but again, oil is going to drain out of here when you pull it, and it makes a mess. I've done it that way in the past, and it's just not its not the right way to do it, in my opinion. So, uh, you know, in 30 seconds, you can have the skid plate off and make it a nice, neat job. All right, so now this skid plate is loose in the front. You'll see there's one 14 millimeter nut in the back. If we take that out, we'll be able to remove this skid plate and then we can get on with draining the oil out. So I'm just going to back this nut out there and the skid plate will come out and we'll be ready to go. Alright, you can see that I've removed that skid plate and I went ahead and I just put the uh, nut back on the stud there so I wouldn't lose it. Now I've got plenty of room to remove the uh, drain plug from the oil pan. Of course you want to have a catch basin below it and I went ahead and put some newspaper down just in case I get any drips but um, now this is going to be a 22 millimeter socket um, which is not really a standard size it comes with a, with a you know sort of a standard mechanics tool set so I had to buy that um, for my local auto parts store for a few bucks but um, you know now I can do my own oil changes from here on out so anyway we're going to back this out and then we'll get our uh, let it drain for a few minutes and we'll uh, start filling. So Now before I did this I went ahead and drove the vehicle for a few minutes to get the oil warm uh, which is going to allow it to drain a whole lot easier. There you can see it comes on out. So we're going to let it drain. Make sure you don't lose your plug. Um, and I'll be back with you shortly once it's done draining. Alright I've given it a few minutes to drain. You can see it's just barely dripping now. Um, so I'm ready to go ahead and remove the oil filter. Now there's still going to be some oil that comes out. Of course the filter is full of oil and it's sort of a, in a low spot so um, there's going to be oil that drains out here. So I've got another catch pan directly below it and basically the oil filter just unscrews. Lefty loosey so I want to turn it that direction. Um, and you know if you can't get it by hand you can use something like a strap wrench like like that 
that sort of, you know, wraps around it and gives you some torque. Or they, they make special oil filter wrenches, but um, I don't think I'll need it. I'm, I put this filter in myself and I didn't overly tighten it, so I should be able to just spin it off. But basically, you just grab it and start turning. So I'm probably not going to be able to film this. I might need to use two hands, but essentially just unthread it, catch the oil, uh, let it drain out, and then you're ready to put your new filter on before we fill back up. Let me get this off and we'll move on. All right, while we finish letting the uh, oil drain out, um, you can go ahead and prep your filter uh, for installation. Um, this is a Pure Later Pure One. Uh, that's what I typically use. Um, and I like to write the date and mileage at which it was installed on the filter itself. You don't have to do that, just I'm sort of a, uh, a nut when it comes to keep or keeping records. So anyway, all you need to do is take some oil and just put a little bit on the uh, gasket all the way around so that when you install this it will um, it'll spin and not try to rip the gasket out and make a good seal so get that lubed up with some oil and we're ready to install this uh, back on the car and fill it back up so let me reposition under the truck and we'll get going All right, we're ready to put the new filter in. Um, I went ahead and wiped off the mating surface here, got the old oil off. And now that we've got our filter prepped, we're ready to just thread it onto the stud there. Uh, again, it's righty tidy, lefty loosey. And you just spin it on. And you want to make it pretty snug. Um, I'll snug it back up with both hands once I put the camera down, but that's the general idea. Uh, so once we get our filter in, we're ready to fill it back up now. Let me tighten this up and then we'll add some oil. Okay, I've got the filter snugged up now and wanted to mention a very important step. It's obvious, but before we fill back up, you want to make absolutely sure that you put your drain bolt back in. Because uh, otherwise your nice clean new oil is going to end up all over your garage floor or on your driveway. So anyway, just make sure that you remember to reinstall the drain bolt and snug it up nice and tight. And then we'll, now we're ready to fill back up. So let me put a wrench on that and get it tight and then we'll put the oil back in the motor. Okay, we're ready to refill the engine with oil now. Uh, obviously you want to remove your oil oil filler cap and get a nice wide mouth funnel so that you don't spill oil everywhere and what I generally do is I'll I'll put in most of the oil and then I'll start checking the level on the dip, dipstick and adding a little bit as needed it's a pain if you overfill it and you gotta get back underneath and try to back out the drain plug and let a little bit of oil out which is it it's not easy and it's a messy process so Anyway, uh, my engine takes 6.3 quarts of oil, so I'll probably put in about five or five and a half, and then I'll use the dipstick to start checking the level. You know, you just pull it out uh, and see where the oil level is on the indicator at the end. It's not really focused, but pretty much everybody knows how to do that. So anyway, it's this is an easy process, uh, something that anybody can do. Uh, you don't have to be a mechanic really to do this just be able to follow some simple steps and you'll be able to save yourself a few bucks um, by doing it yourself and have the confidence of knowing that you can maintain your own vehicle um, once you finish filling it up obviously you want to put the skid plates back on the bottom I like to uh, finish filling it start the engine let it run for a minute and just make sure I don't have any leaks from the uh, drain bolt or from the uh, filter and then I'll go ahead and turn the engine off and put the skid plates back on so Anyhow, I hope you found this video helpful, and thanks for watching. Good luck.